Yes. So our fell slide two are uh, not risking it. It is worse up there. Uh, and uh, the minutes of the, uh, the meeting, public minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of February, um, I would uh, like to confirm and approve these um, as a correct record of those proceedings. Um, I'm sure we have. Everybody has read them and approved them. No, a second up. I think it's Judith Dobbisher, sorry, Councillor Dobbisher. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we all agree. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, agenda item three declarations of interest. Do we have any declarations of the existence and nature of any private interests, both disclosable pecuniary and other registrable interests? in any matter to be considered or being considered. To the best of my knowledge, we don't. To the best of my knowledge, us being town councillors and Westland and the Furness councillors um, is not material in this agenda. Thank you. Um, agenda item four, questions and representations from the public. Um, we do have a question tonight from Councillor Jonathan Davis. So, um, Councillor Davis, you don't appear to have a a, um, a setup, so um, I'm sure I've got a loud enough voice for everybody to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to copy of the question or the response. I'm going to have to go put on a second one. We, we, we can bring it up. Thank you. <coughs> the leader in this administration since 2019 has pushed forward with the single site plans for Eden Council and the multi-million pound reader house project. Multiple completion dates have come and gone, and the last date given at Cabinet held in Appleby last, sorry, that should be here, was the 31st of March, 23. That date set as the final day of the Council's existence. It's clear walking into the Town Hall this evening that the reader house will not be completed by the 31st of March. Can the leader please inform at all um, as to what is the expected date, Breeder House, as a legacy of this administration, will now be completed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Davis. Uh, so the last reported position on Breeder House to Cabinet was in the quarter three performance report in February, which stated handover was expected in April. The construction programme has been reviewed, and due to cold weather delaying laying of concrete, and issues with the supply of some materials, practical completion of the work is now expected in June. The legacy of this administration in respect of Breeder House has already been secured, with Westland and Furness Council identifying Breeder House as one of the four hub buildings for the new authority. This delivers our commitment of maintaining a substantial council presence in Penrith Town Centre. Um, do you have a supplementary question? I do, yeah. Um, obviously, there is a new planning application gone for the Breeder House. It's the date of June is now given, still expected with that application still to be determined. Um, I do not know of the planning application, so I will need to send you a written answer, perhaps. Uh, Councillor Clark? No, Mr. Clark? A, a written answer. Sorry? We'll get a written answer. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> Agenda 
agenda item uh, five there's questions from members, and there's no uh, questions from members this evening. And agenda item six is the Alston Conservation Area Appraisal and Management Plan, which is on pages seven to 294 of your packs. And this, um, this falls into my uh, portfolio as planning. And um, this Alston Conservation Area Character Appraisal and Management Plan is a great read, and I recommend it. So there's a fantastic Fascinating historical account, uh, followed by an illustrated summary of architectural features. There's a description of the various character areas with the conservation area, within the conservation area. And the document goes on to list designated assets, which is listed buildings, and their condition, and unlisted buildings, which nevertheless are of significant local value. Alston is a place of great character and indeed beauty, as we know but needs investment to realise the full potential of the historic landscape described in this excellent document. A SWOT analysis makes some pragmatic suggestions leading to the proposed management plan on page 151 of your pack. So guidance is offered how existing policies in the EU local plan, particularly EMV 10 and 10, the historic environment, should be interpreted referring in turn to guidance produced by national statutory consultation bodies on heritage protection, such as Historic England, and national amenity societies, such as the Victorian Society. Some guidance on energy efficiency is offered, and an overview of the planning situation for property owners. Finally, recommendations to help remove Alston from the Heritage at Risk Register are made and suggestions for highways improvements. Appendix B on page 179 of your pack lists uh, individuals' descriptions of heritage assets. So this lengthy report concludes with copies of EDC's guides to listed buildings, conservation areas and replacement doors and windows. So I'd like to conclude by congratulating officers and thanking them, particularly Eileen Malaret, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, is it Malaret or Malaret? I don't know. Our conservation officer, which is not here to ask. And also all those officers who assisted, who assisted with the considerable consultation that underpins this document. So I believe this document, uh, it is a material planning consideration, and I believe is it an SPD? Is it, is, it, is it a special planning document or not? I, 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 I was just curious. I believe it's supplementary planning guidance. Supplementary planning guidance. Thank you. So the recommendation, excuse me, the recommendation is that a cabinet adopts the character appraisal and management plan report set out in Appendix 2 and issues an adoption statement. And secondly, the Cabinet delegates authority to the Assistant Director Development to make minor amendments to correct factual errors or improve the clarity of the document prior to publication. So I've made that recommendation. Does anybody have any questions to ask? In which case, can I have a second then? Uh, Councillor Greenwood, thank you very much. Does anybody have any, anything that we should say? Yes. Sorry, I was just going to say how much I enjoyed reading it. I often find that when I'm reading um, these things to do with conservation areas, it gets me to appreciate all the details that make up a landscape um, and a townscape such as Alston. It makes me appreciate Alston more, but also makes me appreciate other areas and all the things that town councils, parish councils, District councils and other councils strive to maintain and look after um, to make these places special. I uh, just enjoy reading these things. That's strange. Good. Thank you. Has anybody got anything further to say? In which case, maybe pass this report. Thank you. Um, and then moving on to agenda item seven, which is asset of community value, um, the George Hotel. In Autumn. Now, since um, Councillor Sharp is 
uh, Sinan government. Oh, it's, it's resources. Would you like to introduce this report? I will. Thank you. Thank you. The purpose of this report, Chair, is to consider the nomination of the George Hotel Alderton as an asset of community value under the Localism Act 2011. A nomination has been received from Alton Parish Council for the George Hotel to be listed as an asset of community value. The, no the nomination of land as an asset of community value can be made by numerous different parties. In this case, it has been made by Alton Parish Council. The application is valid for the pur purposes of this nomination and thus Council must consider the application. Alton Parish Council sets out the reasons why they believe that the nominated land should be viewed as being of community value in the nomination form at Appendix A. And in summary, it is a vital local hub, the only pub in the village and the only place serving food in the evening for some miles. It hosts various community events including lunch clubs, dominoes, singing, musical events and dance competitions. The pub purchases from the local shop and provides employment for local people. It provides accommodation for those undertaking the coast-to-coast -coast walk and there is no other overnight accommodation in the village. The walkers and cyclists who visit support other local initiatives such as the farmers market and summer exhibitions. It is clear from the information provided that the pub is used for events and activities which can be said to go beyond a mere public house and further the social interests of the community and therefore it is considered that the nomination should be accepted. Consultation has been conducted in accordance with the statutory requirements of the Localism Act 2011 and the ward member has been notified. The Council has not received any further representations at the time of writing this report. However, any comments received will be reported to the Cabinet. Mrs. Tremble, have we received anything? No, thank you. Okay. In that case, Chair, I am happy to move the recommendation and it is recommended that the nomination of the George Hotel <coughs> Alton as an asset of community value be accepted. Thank you very much, Councillor Green. Does anybody have anything to, to comment, to say, to ask? In which case, um, if somebody would like to second the thank you for the champion um, is seconding this report, and I'm sure we will all be pleased to visit the George Hotel Asset Community Value. And um, we will now vote to approve it. Putting on the register. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda item eight. Uh, it's, it's, the report's entitled Single Site Project Penrith and for Accommodation Works. And um, this is um, again in my portfolio. Um, So, the single site project at Penrith mm -hmm. Town So, the long held ambition of Eden District Council to move to a single site is at long last nearing completion. Yeah. Eden's successors, Western and Furness Council, have chosen Penrith's Reader House to be one of their hubs and anchor building, thereby retaining council jobs and services for the people of Eden. And what's more, this anchor institution will benefit the businesses and the economy of people. The town hall is a splendid building, and it won't take a great deal of remodeling to make it ready to be used as a place for fun, entertainment, learning, enterprise, and innovation. High streets are increasingly places you go to do things rather than buy things, and the town hall will offer activities for town residents even people from further afield, and tourists from the UK. <coughs> it will add to the town's nighttime economy and be a place where local artists and performers can flourish and where national and international artists can bring the outside in. 
London-based architects Harald Tompkins, a practice with experience of converting civic buildings into 21st century hubs of activity, after a period of consultation and research, proposed a number of potential models of development for the town hall. The most appropriate is to run a period of activities called test bed to ascertain what is needed and what, is, what will work. So in April 2022, £150,000 was initially allocated from the £750,000 capital pot for the town hall. As the move into Reader House grows closer, Carl Tompkins have revisited the town hall and a number of opportunities have been identified, including installing completely new toilets and more of them. The existing ones are beyond refurbishment. Having a changing places facility. Improve accessibility via the ramp at the front. Reopening the old Portland Place entrance and creating a space for pop-up food and beverages to service events and activities in the building. We would open up this opportunity to local businesses to provide this service. So this report seeks cabinet approval to draw down a further £200,000 from that initial capital allocation of £750,000 for essential works to the town hall once the council has moved into Farida House. The report also recommends that the contract with Howard Tompkins Architects is extended so they act as our agent for the actual procurement and delivery of the accommodation works, as this is a cleaner way of getting the works done. The rising costs within the construction trade is a widespread issue, but we have allocated the funding to get these works done, and these modest works now will allow the town hall to become an accessible place for all to use and enjoy. So I'd therefore like to make the recommendations in the report, which is A, that we draw down a further £200,000 from the capital programme allocation of £750,000 for the refurbishment of the town hall, and secondly, to extend the contract with Howard Tompkins to act as the council's agent for the procurement and delivery of the preliminary, preliminary accommodation works. So, uh, does anybody have any proposals? Does anybody have any questions? No. Um, could I have a second? Uh, ah, Councillor Ruddle, thank you very much. And if we have no further questions, then thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. The agenda item, of course, is carried. Um, <clears throat> agenda item nine, the final report of the S one of uh, section one hundred six task and finish group. Um, so this also is in my portfolio because of, because it is uh, section one hundred six agreements on planning agreements, and yet again, it is a uh, an extraordinarily good piece of work. Uh, it's a great read, um, and the first thing I have to do is really, really thank the, uh, the scrutiny group who did this piece of work. Um, it took a long time to complete, a lot of attention, um, clearly considerable report, support from officers, um, and um, it's really congratulations all round. I could, uh, I could read it. But I feel that the, um, it's probably something best enjoyed in private. Um, so um, I think that, that initially the, 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 um, the, the task and finish group uh, recognised the need for, um, for additional officer support to finally um, clarify what 106 monies were where and get them into a clear table and clear form so everybody is now totally totally clear of, um, of just what a, a resource we have to spend on mostly on affordable housing for uh, for residents and uh, future residents of Eden. 
Um, so I'm going to um, simply make the, uh, the recommendations because the, the, the section 106 is so complicated. So the report details, excuse me, before I make the recommendation. So as long ago as in March 2022, the overview and scrutiny committee established that task and finished groups to review the council's processes for managing section 106 agreements and planning obligations. And um, at its meeting of the 2nd of March 2023, these members of the uh, overview and scrutiny after uh, a year and more's work resolved to request cabinet to invite the executive of Westman and Furnish Council to note the recommendations in the report and to consider or take account of them in formulating future, future policy. So the attached report sets out the engagement and consultation um, and um, I would just like to um, call upon the unprepared, forgive me, uh, Councillor Derbyshire who knows a lot more about section 106 agreements <coughs> And what they do for um, for people and for houses. So, Councillor uh, Dodge, what you just say? In a way, it's funding that we can use to help move forward affordable housing projects. Uh, yes, it can be used for other wide things, but a lot of the funds have been reserved for that. And I'll give credit to the housing team because quite often they have been keeping tabs on what money's been coming in and what money's been going out as part of this wider project. But for example, later on, we're discussing the funding to the Pastel Parish Community Land Trust, and the money, some of the money from this pot of money, is helping them move forward to take forward their ambitions to provide housing to keep people with being able to live and stay in places like Nairobi, which are very expensive with quite often low wages but very expensive housing. So, in a way, this money is aimed and being used to provide the provide funds to be able to take things forward, but at times also just to, in a way, some funds to be able to additionally move things forward, working with housing associations and other bodies. So it's in a way of providing the affordable housing community. Thank you very much. And there have been questions. This is, we're going to recommend this report to Western and Furness Council. So there have been uh, queries about, uh, as it were, Eden's 106 money and whether it uh, will remain in Eden, and the answer is a resounding yes. Um, within the, um, the report on page 321, um, in the context of planning obligations run with the land are legally binding and enforceable, so that if it, the, the, planning, the, the 106 agreements are associated with the, the original planning application which led to their, which led to their formation. So, um, if anybody has anything further to ask or say, so I've made these proposals, and um, would somebody like to second me as Councillor Derbyshire? And so, unless anybody has any further questions, we would like to uh, devote and approve this um, this report. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to agenda item ten on page three five seven of your pack. Uh, Eaton District Council Community Fund recommendations. Um, this would be in um, Councillor Sharp's portfolio, and she's not here, and I've completely forgotten who was going to introduce her. Councillor Robert, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek approval of grant funding awards from the Council's Community Fund to seven of the nine projects set out in Appendix A. The report details the Eden District Council Community Fund was established in 2013-14 to support and develop community initiatives within the council area. The Community Fund combined three previous grant schemes, the Community Fund, the Rural Infrastructure Fund and the Village Hall Fund, Village Hall Grant, sorry. The Rural Infrastructure Fund was discontinued after 2013-14. A total of £110,000 was available for the community fund at the start of the current financial year 2022-23. A balance of £19,732.37 remained from the previous financial year and was agreed by the Easter Council of Assistance and Direct Finance that this amount should be carried over into 2022-23 budget in autumn 2022. 
This left an overall balance of £129,732.37. £57,801.85 was awarded in the first and second tranches of 2022-23, leaving an overall balance of £71,930.52 available for this tranche. Eden District Council Committee from the Partnership Panel held a virtual meeting via Microsoft Teams on the 8th of February 2023 to assess 10 applicants against the set criteria. The partnership was chaired by the Community Portfolio Board and consisted of representatives from Action with Communities in Cumbria and Paris Action for Community Transition and individual community representatives. Of the nine applicants considered, five of the applications were recommended for funding for the full requested amount. One application was recommended for deferral for the next funding round, pending more information, and three were recommended for refusal. The five recommended applications and their applicants have been checked to ensure that they meet the criteria. The community form criteria set out delivers wide community benefit, contributes to lo locally identified community needs and priorities, demonstrates value for money, has ability to measure success of a project or event, and has ability to demonstrate the quality of opportunity and the elimination of discrimination. Following further consultation with the community's portfolio holder, officers have recommended approved approval of two additional projects. The deferred Ainstable Parish Council submission, given the panel will not be convened to reconsider the project prior to LGR implementation, and the Barton Cooley Bridge Community Fund CIO, given that this will be a pilot project of considerable potential benefit to the community. The recommendations within this report reflect the recommendations of the Committee Fund Partnership Panel and subsequent further discussion with the community's portfolio holder. Any decision to reduce or increase resources or attempt to increase income to be made within the context of the Council's stated priorities as set out in the Council Plan 2019 to 2023 as agreed at Council on the 7th of November 2019. And the recommended grant funding of awards are within £110,000 community fund budget allocation for 2022-23. So, Chair, give me pleasure to move the recommendations that the Cabinet agree the panel recommendations for approval of the five projects are set out in Appendix A. To note the panel recommendation reads submission for Ainsville Parish Council and the following consultation with community portfolio holder approve the project for funding given there will be. There will not be an opportunity for the panel to review this project before the LGR implementation. To note, the panel recommendation reads submission from Barton and Cooley Bridge Community Fund CIO and following consultation with the community portfolio holder, approve this project for funding given that the, this will be a pilot project with considerable potential benefit to the community. And finally, to approve total funding of £71,839.64 leaving residue funds of £90.88. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. So, um, would somebody like to second this? Councillor Darbyshire, thank you very much. And uh, does we have any... Do we wish to enter into the debate? I have just... Um, I'd like to uh, be very. Um, the, the, the community fund has been going for a very long time. I mean, how long has it been going? Like, you know, you've been around. <laughs> We're not calling you old. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's quite a long time, and it's really, um, um, really sort of helped people in a great deal. Yes. I was going to say, I think you remember being involved in about 2013, so 10 years ago. Or yeah. Or Yes. So it's um, the community fund is an important fund. So um, we'd like to um, to approve these recommendations t tonight. Thank you very much. So um, the approval of the grant fund is set out in that. Uh, agenda item eleven uh, is the Eden Play Area Improvement Fund recommendations. This is also um, in council is in council shops. Uh, Portfolio and did somebody draw the short? No, it doesn't look like it. So, um, 
Um, and so um, I'd like to present this report, which is to uh, um, to approve to seek approval of the grant funding awards from the Eden Play Area Improvement Fund to the seven projects set out in Appendix A. So this was a special fund uh, which we wish to um, to um, to address some of the. Um, unfortunately, not enough time and not enough money to do everything that might possibly need improving or could be improved um, in the in the play areas throughout Eden. But we made a, a, a little start, and um, I'm very happy that we've been able to um, to um, to renovate and to uh, and to add new 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 play area equipment and um, in the various places which are scattered throughout the district. So I think it's, it had, a, it had a, a, good, a good spread. And I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Sharp for, the, for, for this one because I think it, believe, uh, it was really um, one of her um, corporate priorities, I believe we call them, yes. So this, was, um, this was something that was very much part of her vision how her portfolio would improve the lives of the people, in this case, the children of Eden. So, um, I'd like to make the recommendations, which is that we agree the panel recommendations for approval of the eight projects as set out in Appendix A. Um, to note the panel recommendation about the submission from Oosby Parish Council regarding the request for resurfacing works, Following the consultation with the community's portfolio holder, that we offer the residual funding available from this grants program, there was £1,294 remaining. We offer that as a contribution to this project, given there will not be an opportunity for the panel to review the project before LGR implementation. So there's just a slight difference from the panel recommendations in what we are recommending to Cabinet. Now. So I'd like to make that proposal. Does anybody have any questions about that? Or and uh, so, uh, Councillor Tompkins, we're going to second this report. And uh, we have no debate, so we shall approve this report. Thank you. Oh, no, I got this one. I can get this one. Okay. Agenda item 12 is the environment and reprofiling of capital budget. A catchily named report, Councillor Tompkins, which you will uh, introduce for us. Thank you. Yeah, it's up to you again. Um, you switch the mic on, please. The purpose of the report is to seek approval for 25,000 violence of capital budget. 2022-2023 for the repair to the field drainage at Appleby King George at this playing field. A pitch well known to me, which I wear in place as a player and also more controversially as a referee. It is proposed that 25,000 budget is to be used as grant funding from a complementary project on the same site, installing a fireside size 3 g or weather pitch and improvements to the clubhouse. The CG peak pitch project will require external funding and therefore won't be completed in 2022 3 So approval will be needed to reprofile the budget to 2023-24. The report states that the council commissioned the ground management association to carry out an assessment of the condition of the player pitch to this playing field to determine the cause of any issue with the pitch time given its recent history and work. The report confirmed the pitch was in a poor and unsafe condition and cited field grading problems and football overuse of the field as the main causes. They recommended a, a reconstruction of the field grading to be undertaken at an estimated cost of around £50,000 in, in addition reducing the usage of the wear of the main pitch. In February 2022, the council set aside a £50,000 capital budget to start the work during the close season. 
during the same period, an application for funding for water work was submitted by the council in late March 2022 to the Football Foundation. And they awarded the council a £25,000 contributing grant towards the field drainage reconstruction work costs. The grant award means that only £25,000 of the council's own resources are required. It is therefore proposed to use the union unused 25,000 to support the budget proposal for a 3G bridge. The provision of a fiber side all weather fence and lick training area would greatly reduce the stress and damage on the main grass pitch. It would also be made widely available for other sports and activities throughout the year. The football club, the council, and the football foundation working on bringing together a scheme with a formal application to the Football Foundation due shortly. The total cost of the scheme is likely to be in excess of £700,000. For confirmation, EDC owned the King George and Fifth Field, the club having a peppercorn lease on the building. So the recommendation is to approve a capital environment of £25,000 for a grant towards a 3G pitch on the Applegate in George the fifth playing field on the budget for repairs on the same site and to further approve the reprofiling of the ride budget to 2023 and 2024. Thank you very much, Councillor Tonkin. Councillor Tonkin, you have a question. Um, this, this King George V, although we own it, there's a playing field something or another, isn't there, which is a, some kind of a trust or something which has some involvement with. This is it and this is yeah. a playing field association. Can I say that uh, actually I have a King George the Sixth, I mean, it's just not it, 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 it was given by that trust. That's large now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a playing field association. Yeah. Is that something about playing field association? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just um, um, the um, there is uh, recently the, the Supreme Court decision about uh, um, about the Shropshire Council case. About that about you know that the public recreation land is quite complicated. And we just uh, Lady Rose giving the judgment to the court said that the local authority should take stock of having acquired and hold public recreation land thus identified as a sellable trust. So it's so that sale is restricted. Not that we're intending to sell it, but just that uh, it is quite complicated. I believe there's one of the issues with dog walking on the field is because we can't. Um, we can't stop the dog walking because it is not a designated. Um, um, it is a, it is a designated uh, public community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, um, um, just to confuse matters, I was just uh, um, asking about the, the, the state. We're very glad to see that it is um, no longer. Um, uh, up and down and up and down with the um, the field, uh, the playing field, and um, and uh, uh, thank you very much for this. Uh, <coughs> yes. I'd just like to thank everybody that's been involved in this project, <coughs> especially Doug Huggan and other officers um, working on this um, to make it happen. Uh, it's a really popular and well-used piece of land and um, we needed a lot of work recently. But um, because it's so well-used and because um, the club at Appleby use it so much, the 3G pitch project will be really, really valuable um, additional asset in Appleby. So I'd just like to thank everybody who's been involved in that to make that happen. And uh, I look forward to seeing its completion. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, there's no planning. Where much is the CD project going to be situated? There's no planning. Well, it's not 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 plan
actually We can get that supplies. Um, we'll get that supplies to all the cabinets, just the location of the Thank you very much. If I remember the, the pictures there, there's a very little space in the clubhouse, and on the riverside, we're pretty dangerous. No. I'm sure there's not just one. Um, so, um, so uh, Councillor Tomkin proposed it. Do we have a second? Councillor Ruddle, thank you very much. And if there's anybody got anything further to say, um, thank you. We have support. Moving on to agenda item 13 housing fund application. Mm -hmm. Patterdale Irish Community Land Trust. <coughs> Housing and Health, I put it right this time. Yes. As referred to before, um, Eden District Council have been working to help housing associations, community land trusts, and others take forward affordable housing. This one I'm especially pleased with. In the past, in the different role I've worked with the Keswick Community Housing Trust, across the road to it, the Community mm -hmm. Land Trust and others who've created their own solutions to problems where they've got a lack of affordable housing. And so I was really pleased when Pastel Community Land Trust came forward and um, they've got a site in Glenridi which is owned by the moment by the Lake District National Park, but they've been working with the National Park, I've stepped back from it in my Lake District National Park role, um, to look to provide housing for local people. Um, having lived there, I know the issues to do with low local wages, um, high house prices and the difficulty people find with finding suitable housing to be able to stand by. Um, I was up there talking to the school recently and they were saying this, you know, things like electricity bills and rent are a problem for them, but their main long term concern is the lack of children living in the area to be able to be on the school well in the future. So um, they're very keen to get schemes like this coming forward to allow especially younger people and families to stay in the valley. The community have worked together um, to produce their plans, working with Eden Housing Association. Uh, they've got other experts on board to, to give them assistance. Also, staff at Eden District Council, like it's going to be born, um, have been doing a great job to be able to take them forward. They have got it a long way forward and got the planning commission nearly sorted, and then naturally done more to the mutual neutrality issues. Um, and that has therefore meant that they've got to find some extra land or do things to sort out the issue of the neutrality issues, which they need extra funding for. The, because it's been delayed because of that, they also need some more funding because it's just got a lot more expensive. Materials have gone up in price in the last year or so. So this is supplementary funding, as stated in um, 3.7, it's this application for affordable housing fund is for funding to cover nutrient neutrality and mitigation proposals and work and to account for the rise in building and cost inflation. And so the funding is coming out of the community housing fund and also the section 106 funding which we were referring to earlier. So I'm very pleased that we can support the community trust. The, the, the um, proposal I'm putting forward for 10 houses is nearly up to passive house standards. It has issues due to light and sunshine, or lack of sunshine in places like Germany, um, not being able to get to that full standard, but it's very close to it. Um, so, my recommendation is that we approve the 220, sorry, 220,000 funding for the Passel Parish Community and Land Trust to enable the delivery of 10 affordable housing homes at Greenside Road, Glenridge. The funding to be allocated as follows. 20,000 from the Community Housing Fund and the remaining 200,000 to be funded from retained Section 106 receipts. That funding is subject to the completion of a funding agreement with delegation to the Assistant Director of Legal and Democratic Services to draft and approve committee terms. Thank you, Councillor Dodge. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to add my congratulations to everybody for getting this. I mean, 10 affordable houses in the National Park, you know, is uh, is um, not easy. So, um, so congratulations to everybody for, for, for getting this far. Um, does anybody have any questions to, to ask about this? Um, well, in that case, if I may second it, um, 
I'd like to, uh, as I say, um, um, delivering, um, if not passive house, then close to it, affordable housing is uh, one of the things that we very much intended to do in our four years. And um, I'd just like to say that uh, um, before I get sentimental, um, but I think this this slap is uh, sort of like is a uh, indicative of um, of the fact that the officers and members I think I think we've delivered quite a lot in four years considering we had uh, COVID in the middle of it. Um, I won't uh, deliver us a, a long list of our achievements now. You'll have to put up this at the council. Um, but I would like to really thank everybody here. Um, Amanda, um, I remember you in 2020 bashing this into shape, bashing all this sort of like the corporate priorities and this, that, and the other. And it wouldn't have happened without you, and so thank you so much. Um, and I can sort of, uh, who can I? I'm going to sing like anybody else. <coughs> Um, so, um, um, so um, thank you all very much. Thank you for um, all your attention over the four years, those who have been here for four years. Um, I don't think anybody's been here for a whole four years. I think less, almost. Lisa has. and everybody else is an average beast. Um, but um, but um, we, the, the new energy and the expertise that we have uh, from our uh, from our consultants and um, and Les um, deserves as much or more or the equal praise to them. So um, that's it, everybody. Oh, we not voting on it. Never did. We voted on it. I got carried away. I would like to second. Yes, I think we did second. I second. I second. But then I forgot to go to the vote. All right. Well done. Well done. So thank you, everybody. And um, it's um, it's like a guru. I was coming and said when people said when are you going to retire, he said I've only just had a running start. So. Um, We've just got a running start, and um, we're looking forward to a great future. Those of us who are in it. Thank you very much, everybody, for meeting.